All right, so today we're going to be doing the chlorine demand test. And so we've set up a lot of the glassware ahead of time. Uh, everything has been washed with soap and water and then uh, rinsed with the millipore water. And we always use millipore water at the end to ensure that there's no chlorine um, coming from uh, our taps. We've put in one liter of water into each of the flasks. There's nine flasks. The way that we do that is we filled up a, volume, a one liter volumetric flask with the water, and then we just pour it into these reactors. These large flasks are called um, Florence flasks. We use them to onto this chlorine demand and we we produce ethanol in them as well. So yeah, different reactions, we'll use these Florence flasks. So we've put our one liter of water into each one of these flasks. Then we're going to take our water intake sample. So this is our raw water. And we're going to take 10 mils of it, which I've already measured out here, and pour it into our reactor. Put a bit of cotton wool in. Give it a shake. So each one of our flasks has been tr uh, treated exactly the same way. And this is going to represent our contaminated water. And then what we have set up here is our standardized chlorine water. So we're going to be dosing each one of those reactor flasks with different amounts of this chlorine. You can see some information um, on the label here that indicates that for, uh, for every 0.99 milliliters of chlorine water that's added, that is equal to one ppm of chlorine um, in the solution. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, and that's because our final volume is not one liter, it's actually uh, 1,010 milliliters because of that additional water intake that we've added. As you can see uh, listed in front of each of the flasks, there is a number ranging from one, two, three, all the way up to 10. And this represents the, um, the concentration of chlorine that we're dosing each of the reactors with. The way that we dose each reactor is with this chlorine water. And so I'm going to be adding very accurately a known amount of chlorine that will represent, or that will reflect uh, one ppm up to 10 ppm. So we're gonna have 10 reactors, 10 different concentrations of chlorine. The time that I add the chlorine is considered time zero. And so we're going to allow each reactor um, to interact with that chlorine for exactly 30 minutes, 60, 90, and then 120 minutes. And we're going to see how much residual chlorine is present at each one of those times. So as I add the chlorine, you may have seen, there is a stopwatch beside each of those flasks. The moment that I add the chlorine, someone, oh, Ian, is going to initiate the stopwatch. And so that will be time zero. And then we'll take samples at, like I said, 30, 60, 90, and 120 minutes to see how much residual chlorine uh, is present. So if you're ready, Ian, I will dose with the first 
one ppm of chlorine. So in my lab book, the information that I've captured so far, I've got the title, the date, the people, the objective, and the method is listed here as well. Then under data, I've also captured that uh, what was on the label, that 0 0.99 milliliters of chloride is equal to 1 ppm in solution. The initial volume that I've determined here, it's not the easiest scale to read. If you can, I don't know if that's going to come across the screen, but this is a 10 milliliter burette, and the values allow us, or the divisions allow us to actually read to three um, positions after the decimal place. So, and we can always read to one tenth of the smallest division. We can see here that this volume is 0 0.250 milliliters. So I can uh, capture that in my book. Oops, zero point zero, not point zero. Zero point two five zero milliliters. All right, so I'm going to dispense approximately one milliliter, but then I'm going to read the volume very accurately to exactly whatever that final volume is. Oops, up. All right, so we had a small technical glitch, but we're ready to carry on with our titrations. And so, uh, as indicated, our initial volume is 0 0.250 milliliters. If we're ready to go ahead with the timing, we are good to go. So again, it doesn't have to be exactly one milliliter, um, but record the volume exactly so that we know uh, precisely how much was dispensed. And go. Let me read. 1.1, 1 1.205. No, wait. Is it 205? 25. No, it's. That's 25. That's 2. 1.243 milliliters. So that is the first amount of chlorine added. Excuse me. Thank you. Now I'm not going to, don't need to read the initial volume again, because I'm not going to change it. Now I'm going to add two milliliters. Started the stopwatch, and this volume is 
3.198 that's my second volume thank you so I can capture that don't have to change it. Third one. Six point one, not quite the two, six point one five, six point one five five. So that's the third dosing. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to top up the volumes. Oh, yeah, will I have enough? No, I won't. So I'm going to I'll take my chlorine. Whoops. Unfortunately, the burette is so narrow that the funnels don't fit in. Give the beard a wipe down the outside. Oh, the reading. Zero point one oh six. So the initial bone zero point one six. So we should be adding five milliliters or so. No, four mils. Four mils. Four. Okay. So this reading is four point. Oh my goodness. Four point one one two. Which I can use for the five. Thank you all. So now we need to add five milliliters. So we go down to the nine inch area, just to see where that is. see this, I'm actually going to have to move the burette downwards. Alright, 
so nine point Ooh, got it. That is a tough one to see. Not quite a line. Nine point zero eight zero. All right, so we're going to finish up the uh, the next five, and then I will show you the results. All right, so we've gone ahead with the rest of the dosings. Um, you can see, I don't know if I can hear, 60 minutes in here. All the stopwatches are running. We've got a bit of time uh, before our first 30 minute uh, aliquot is taken up. And so while that's progressing, uh, Let's have a look at the data for our chlorine dosing. As you can see all the numbers here, the uh, 10 ppm dose was indeed the most difficult because I actually had to set it at zero and bring it down to 10.000, which is something, uh, you know, as a technologist, you would never do. Uh, you would just record it accurately rather than spending all the time trying to get it exactly at zero. But we had to for our 10 mils. So that was that data. Um, once we stop the reaction in the Florence flasks, we need to, at that, after that, titrate with sodium thiosulfate to determine how much residual chlorine um, is in that sample. We need to make up that titrant ourselves. Um, as per the, the manual, we're going to take 10 milliliters that's the chlorine, uh, and uh, dis uh, dissolve it, <laughs> dilute it up to 88.6 grams. So I'm actually going to grab a beaker here. This is going to be N over 40. Sodium thiosulfate. So I want to get, I'm going to put some of this into here and then some of that into there. Now the beaker that is on the balance has already been washed and dried. This guy, though, however, is a little bit wet. So I'm going to do some micro rinsing of it. micro rinse everything at home too. My dishes are soap free. Doing them in the sink. And the reason that I'm putting this into a beaker first is to allow me to more accurately ensure that 10 grams is added to the uh, diluted beaker. Uh, do we have those disposable pipettes over here? Yeah, this will, this will help us out. All right, so we turn on the balance. Tear. 
our beaker. And we're going to add 10 grams. Maybe you're asking yourself, why is he doing a dilution like this? 10 grams up to 88.6. And it's because if you look at the chemistry um, and the math behind it, we're creating something called a titer. And this titer is it's a chemist's way of being lazy, to be honest. It allows us to in a very simple and straightforward manner, uh, manipulate the chemistry ahead of time so that we don't have to do the math afterwards. Doing this dilution allows us to equate one milliliter of theosulfate is equal to one milligram per liter of chlorine in our sample. Thank you for the water, Ian. So we're going to dilute this up to 88.6. I need spray bottle, wash bottle, that one. All right. So this is now going to be our titrate. So I'm going to uh, micro rinse our burette, fill it up, and then add in seven minutes, we'll get back together and we'll stop the reaction and get on to our titrations. All right. All right, so we are now approaching the first 30 minutes. You can see on the stopwatch here, this guy's got a little more than two and a half minutes to go. So as we get close to that 30 minute mark, we're going to pour off 100 milliliters of the sample and we're going to get ready to add our potassium iodide, our glacial acetic acid, and our starch. And you want to add these reagents right at the 30 minute mark. And so I'll pour off the first one, and then I'll wait for Ian to let me know exactly when that stopwatch hits 30 minutes. Then I'll have my, my partner do the subsequent ones while I 
uh, complete the titrations with the sodium thiosulfate. You don't want to pour off your 100 milliliters too soon. You don't want to do it in advance because you want the reaction to happen within the Florence flask. You don't want it occurring on a smaller scale. I think we're still good. All right. So we've got 90 seconds left. So I will pour 100 milliliters. into my titration cup. And with bated breath, wait for the 30 minute mark, which is in 55 seconds. So Ian, when it hits 30, if you could hit, say something. I'll say go. Go. <laughs> Start. Hurry, I don't know. Hurry, hurry hard. Okay, so these have already been primed. Uh, to one milliliter of potassium iodide, one milliliter of glacial acetic acid, and about two milliliters of the starch solution. Exactly 30 minutes. And the starch. Right, so Ian will continue on with that. Uh, Reaction. You can see here that there is a faint hint of blue. So we want to titrate with the theosulfate until the blue disappears. So I've got my titrant here. My burette is all micro rinsed and filled. I have an initial volume for my first titration of 1.04 milliliters. You may have just heard Ian stopping the reaction. Once that occurs, the solution is quite stable. We don't actually have to get to the titrating right away. There it is. It is clear and colorless, so we can record the volume. Not very much at all. Point zero nine. So that's the uh, second volume there. Ian, did you add the starch? Oh, not yet. Okay. So that one is done. Woo! That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so this third one turned yellow.
looks like that drop will finish it off. Clear and colorless. One point five. Four. So that's our second titration. I'm going to set up for the third one. Every now and then, when you do this uh, titration, the addition of the starch, sometimes there will be little particles uh, that are uh, precipitated out uh, that, that come with the starch. And as you look at the color, sometimes the particles will actually hold on to the blue. And we have to look beyond those particles and look at the solution itself. So this volume, it's quite a bit more now, is 5.5, no, yeah, 5.50. Oh. Right. And Ian, did you add the starch? Not yet. Okay. And that's okay. I mean, again, once the reaction is fixed. Um, it's stable. Not forever, but so This is at six point one two. Oh, Ian, this is going really well. <laughs> Just looking at the volumes. These are great numbers. that too. So you can see that the titrations go very quickly. Uh, there's actually going to come a point where I'm going to be waiting uh, for time to pass. So it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how on the first day of doing titrations back in the first semester, uh, you probably did three titrations in a four hour block. Now you're going to be doing 40 titrations an hour and you're going to be bored. 6.54, 6 6.33. All right, so you can see that we're going to continue on with these titrations. Uh, Ian's just got number six set up here. And then uh, once all of these titrations are done, uh, for the 30 minute mark, uh, we'll wait till the 60 minute mark, 90, and then an hour and 20. 
And so Ian and I, we're going to do all these titrations and then share with you the results uh, in about 90 minutes or so. All right. All right, so we've, uh, we've actually started to tidy up here. Um, you can see all of our flasks. Uh, we've put away the stopwatches. Um, over the past two hours, Ian and I, we have, every 30 minutes, poured off 100 milliliters of our water. The chlorine has been reacting with the raw water intake. And at those specific times, we stopped the reaction with the, uh, where did we put the, oh, so with the, with the acetic acid, um, let's see if you can see what these are. So we start the reaction with the acetic acid and the potassium iodide. The starches acted as our indicator. And then we titrated with our titer, which was our sodium thiosulfate that was then diluted 10 grams into 88.6 grams. And our resultant volumes are right here. Just to make sure that it shows up nice. So you can see the numbers here for the 30 minute mark, as well as the 60 minute mark, the 90 minute mark, and then the 120 minute mark. Now I haven't actually done the math and calculated out what the final volumes were, um, but you can definitely do that. And then you'll take those volumes that were used to titrate and you'll apply them to a spreadsheet and then a graph. And as you look at the graph, you'll be able to determine what the breakpoint is.